This is Dr. Nancy Berriman. I teach human resource management classes at Wichita State University in the W. Frank Barton School of Business. This is my video on human resource planning Markov analysis. One issue faced by every medium to large size organization is to try to predict or forecast their employment needs. If you consider the human resource planning process, a rather common model would look something like the following. Let's look at these four elements of the human resource planning process. First, we consider how many of what type of people we will need at some specified point in the future. In essence, this is a picture of what we want our workforce inside the company to look like. This forecast is derived from some forecast of what the organization expects to be doing at that specified point in the future. We might say something like this. Based on our plans to produce X number of units of a particular product, we will need Y people. To be even more specific, we will need to break that total number of people needed down to numbers of people in specific jobs. Second we need to determine what might happen to our current workforce between now and that specified point in the future. No workforce is ever static. People are hired, they retire, they are terminated, they leave to pursue other employment, and they are promoted. The focus of Markov analysis is to attempt to project out into the future what our current workforce will look like if current mobility flows continue. In the human resource planning process, we compare our future needs with our future workforce. We determine if there are gaps between what we have and what we need, and then develop plans to fill those gaps. Markov analysis is used to study the flows of people entering, moving within, and leaving an organization. Markov analysis begins by looking at the current organizational structure and translating it into a series of mutually exclusive states that individuals may occupy. These states are then arranged in a matrix with the rows representing the states at time 1 and the columns representing the states at time 2. The, percentage in the percentages in the body of the matrix represent the probability of movement from one state to the other between two time periods. Here is a simple Markov matrix. This is sometimes also called a transition probability matrix. Let's use it to show how this technique can be used. First, let's describe what we have in this matrix. We have a simple matrix that has five job states at time 1 and six at time 2 because there is the possibility that an individual will leave the organization. If we look at the cell of the matrix, which is the intersection between job A and job A, we see that the entry there is point 0.6. This indicates that there is a 60% probability that an individual that is in job A at time 1 will remain in job A at time 2. As we move across the, the table to the right, we find a 0.15. This indicates a 15% probability that an individual in job A at time 1 will be in job B at time 2. In the next table, we see how the probabilities are used. The column on the left indicates the number of people in each job category at time 1. We multiply this number times the probability in the cell to the right to get the number of people who will be in the job at time 2. For example, 60% of the 50 people in job A at time 1 will remain in job A. That means 30 people will remain. Take a few minutes and verify that the rest of the numbers are correct. The next matrix shows the results when we add each column. Let's take a moment and explain what these numbers mean.
In the first column, at time 1, we had a total of 725 people in the five job states. At time 2, we forecast that 42.5 people will be in job A. This is less than we had at time 1. Adding each column will give us the number of people in that job category in time 2. At the far lower right, we see the grand total of employees at time 2. Look and see if you can identify the one job category that has more incumbents at time 2 than at time 1. If you selected Job D, you are correct. One application of this methodology is that it provides a snapshot of the movement of people within an organization. As such, it can serve as the impetus for change. For example, you could identify jobs that are dead-end jobs, jobs that have excessive terminations or excessive exit rates. You might be able to change HR policies and practices to solve those particular problems. As we have seen, we can also use this as a method of forecasting. As with almost any statistical technique, there are limitations. For example, the choice of time period is critical. If it is too long, you will find that people have made multiple changes between time 1 and time 2. You also need sufficient sample size to have stable estimates. Finally, your choice of job states is fairly important. These should not be so large that they are meaningless, nor so small that they begin to represent very small sample sizes. Markov analysis simply represents one of many techniques that you should be familiar with for your HR toolkit.